Good afternoon, lifers. It is good to see all of you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, wanted to go ahead and just begin in prayer and um, let you all touch bases with your thoughts on the Lord right now because things are things are getting interesting right now in the world, especially all around us. So I wanted to go ahead and ask the Holy Spirit to come down here and to reach into the hearts of all of you watching and to be with you and me and each and every single one of us, acquaintance, family, friend, and foe, and that the Holy Spirit's going to open our mind, our eyes, our thoughts, and every other spiritual sense and physical sense that we have in order to... Um, bring back and bring us down and keep us safe in the word and in the message of this episode. 93, by the way, we're getting up there. And uh, yeah, um, happy spring, all of you. And happy spring to you too, Lord God. Amen. So last episode had a lot to do with trusting in God, just the mere thought of coming to trust into God. And like I said, right now things are, things are happening and, you know, we're, we're kind of trying to figure it out and we want to know how do we know we can trust God when yes, there have been many natural disasters, especially within the last three years, earthquakes, major tornadoes, extreme floods. Um, I think that there was even a tsunami not long ago, about a year ago. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and in the last three years, there have been extreme droughts, fires. Um, praise God, my family had to go through the, uh, the last major fires in California and um, they are all very blessed to be alive. Thank you, Jesus. Um, yes, we have been tested. A lot of people um, in our social, in our political arena, and in the arenas of just just in, ge in general here around us in our environment and abroad and, you know, where we're used to being and and. Work environments, you know, normal people, people like us, we tend to think, of course, you know, our church leaders and our world leaders and our political leaders and local level and state level and, and so forth and around the world that they don't know what we're going through. All of that, that's, that's, that's garbage. They do. They struggle quite a bit. And um, they've committed, quite a few of them have committed many evils against their people. Look at the news media. Look at look at media in general. Look at Hollywood. A lot of stuff has happened in the recent past, and it has not been great. And many people have gotten hurt. That is also a fact. Um, we also know that many of our friends and our family and people we know or heard about and have been close to, um, and even in passing, even we ourselves have struggled and we've suffered and we've seen suffering and, and death and debt and milestone disappointments. But that doesn't mean that we don't know that we can trust God. Um, we, we do know. And we're going we're gonna to get into that real quick. Um, there are some things that, that come into play often that people tend to think about excuse the motion, that are um, people just just questioning a lot of what's happened in the past and and people have brought up, oh, well, remember this and that and you're always, you know, preachy and this, this happened, that happened. Let's just stop for a second. There are basic reasons or as I like to call them proofs that we can actually trust in God. First, the fact that we are alive, 
that we have challenges or struggles or issues or addictions or things that we're trying to overcome, the fact that we can see all of the wrongs around us and in the world. Another one is that we can still do something, whether it's big or small, minor or major actions that we can take. We have, again, we have some abilities. We have friends and family. We even know people who know things that we don't know that we can learn. Um, we have good and bad life experiences that have lended wisdom to us. Um, and we are, in many ways, we, we are someone we know has had something big that is supernatural in nature or phenomenal in nature, cannot be explained by mere human wisdom, experience, blah, blah, blah. Here in the Christian world, we call that miracle. We call that event a miracle. We call those events, we call those happenings miracles. And even if you have or have not experienced a miracle, you know that they occur. You can explain it away all you want, but you know that they occur. Finally, I wanted to touch bases with you on basic answers to how we know we can trust God. First, we know we've, we've got the word of God. Um, that's breathed, inspired word of God. We know that people in the past, like when Moses crossed the Red Sea, there's scientific and anthropological proof that it occurred that God actually split the water. Um, we know and we have seen, you know, even in our, in our, in the environment, in our everyday environment, all around us, we've seen things that can give us hope. But we have to remember another major fact in history. With the First and the Second World War, the countries involved, even the countries that fell victim to the Great Depression, to many of the hardships that resulted from these wars, even the war we're kind of in now, and the wars that we're seeing, we know, we see people doing things, we see things happening that are good, that are making it work, that are bringing back to life those places that we've seen or that we've traveled to or that we know of to stabilize these circumstances. They may not be, ha might not be happening right now, might, you know, in our microwave society. We're not seeing what we want, but we know that eventually we will come to that place again. So within all of that, let's remember that these things that, that, that have occurred, even you and I have been through hard things, hard things, very bad things, very heinous crimes that have been committed against us, horrible, horrible experiences even some spiritual attacks. We made it out. If you and I are still here right now in these moments, we made it. God carried us through because there's no other real experience other than the people that helped us if we retained help that actually made that work for us. So let's remember that. What are some of the things that we have in order to know how to get back to that place of faith, hope, and forgiveness, and mercy, and trust in the Lord? Well, one, we definitely have to just talk to God one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano, hand in hand, that means, and really allow ourselves to be rescued from these doubts that we have and these 
harder places that we've been in because we know that once we've overcome this struggle with all the struggles that we're going to face, we're going to be able to overcome all of them, the many struggles. I wanted to also say that thirdly and not lastly, you have to be open to experiencing this good. If you are not necessarily open to experiencing this good, after the many years of pain you've been in, the only way to really be open and to stay open to the good that can come and be a result is by getting rid of all of this bad, by admitting that you and me, and I have to admit that I'm not perfect, that I've said things or thought things or been through some things that really aren't beautiful. And I can let go of that pain and I can forgive those evil people because I'm still here because that's how I get God to, to talk back with me to get into that conversation. And if you don't believe me, you can still go back to the word. You can look at Job, the very last chapter of Job. Because trusting in God is a big job. J-O-B. And the very last, last chapter of Job is 42. And I just want to read you a little bit of his prayer. Because the rest of that chapter is how God um, concretely sets the path for us to be able to believe and know and realize that we can trust him. Definitely we can. I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand. Things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself, and I repent in dust and ashes. Please ponder that right now, Lord God. And, um... Ponder on, think on that with the Lord God is what I'm trying to say. And one tiny little thing, I want to give a shout out to my pastor, Pastor Matt Shea, who has wonderfully been in the news. As you may well know, people have been saying nothing but lies about him. I wanted to let those wonderful, wonderful journalists, Eli and Sean, know that um, we are watching you and we are praying for you. And we understand that you may have experienced horrific things in your life that have led you to lie and to cheat in your form of employment in order to make a story. You are still loved and people like me are still out there and we do forgive you. But do realize that God cannot fully be on your side. And yes, it will always be wonderful to see you in church, but also fully realize that once you step foot in that hospital for beautiful sinners like yourself, that you need to come to God's forgiveness and that you need to turn away from the wickedness that you have just expelled. You are loved. And may God forgive you. God bless you. And take care, lifers. I adore you. I love you. And remember, please have peace in your heart right now. 
even as the world cannot give. Do not allow any of the stuff going on around you right now or any of the wars and evils in the world right now disrupt your peace. Thank you and have a great rest of your opening to spring. Good night.